Dear audience, uh, Dr. Suleyman Ersoy from Istanbul, uh, University of Health, Health Science and uh, Mirania Training Hospital. Please let me first thank uh, Dr. Marim to invite me for such an enthusiastic uh, meeting here in Bosnia on hijama. I want to talk uh, just about the hijama, the cupping therapy and the basic techniques of uh, hijama. Uh, uh, maybe uh, before me, some uh, other uh, speakers might have explained. Hijama is in Arabic originally. For example, in Turkish, we call it hajamat. Uh, but in the literature, it is known to be as cupping therapy. It means to suck, to return to normality. And it is an uh, ancient and traditional method using a regional vacuum to increase blood circulation and provide healing. And the main aim is to remove uh, blood, which is potentially harmful to the body. <clears throat> and it is mainly used, uh, this therapeutic invention, to get rid of the disease or to protect health. Because it, traditionally also, it was used for centuries to prevent health uh, from the upcoming diseases. Mainly, uh, cupping therapy is divided into two. The first one is dry cupping, and the second one is wet cupping. And wet cupping therapy is divided into two, which is the wet cupping of traditional Chinese medicine and the hijama, which is widely uh, performed in Muslim countries. As I told you, hijama is an Arabic word. And another one, which is known as fast, uh, which can be translated as venosuction or bloodletting, drawing blood from the veins, from the vessels. This has been used also uh, traditionally in the ancient times to cure people and to remove toxic substances from the body, but this is not our subject today. As for dry cupping, dry cupping is a one step, which includes, we, we call it single S technique, and it, it includes only the first step of hijama. It is the suction step. You apply the cups to the skin for the purpose of sucking skin into cups. And you can, you can use uh, as a moving cupping therapy. For that reason, you have to apply to the skin an oil for example, olive oil for this purpose. The second one, uh, the, the wet cupping of traditional Chinese medicine is a two-step technique and it is called as double S technique. Uh, you, in that technique, first apply to the skin the cups, the suction step, and then make scarification. And El Hijama, it is also the wet cupping therapy of prophetic medicine, as I told, uh, widely used in Muslim countries, is a three-step technique, which includes suction, scarification, and suction. In that technique, we use the vacuum twice. Uh, and that is unique <clears throat> in its historical origin, especially in Muslim and Arabic countries. If we tell those steps in detail. Single as cupping therapy is a one-step cupping technique devoid of any excretory function. In that technique, you cannot remove any waste substances from the body. As for the double S technique, which includes scarification as well in, in Chinese traditional Chinese medicine, uh, the step of opening the skin barrier, puncturing the skin, I mean, forming incisions on the skin is followed by the cupping step, which is the suction step. And it, uh, up to a level, uh, removes toxic substances from the body. And El Hijama combines both of types of cupping therapy in single original Arabic technique, starting by dry cupping, the suction step, and following the suction steps, scarification and suction steps as well. If you, if we uh, try to explain the hijama 
the triple S technique, we first apply to the skin the cups. This is the suction step, pressure dependent filtration of fenestrated skin capillaries just under the skin barrier. Then we apply to the skin very superficial, multiple short openings with uh, some superficial incisions. And then we apply the skin, the second uh, suction step, uh, which pressure dependent capillary filtration precedes and also follows opening the skin barrier during this triple S technique. This technique allows uh, uh, optimum uh, clearance of the blood and other toxic substances just from the epidermal level. Uh, if we begin uh, just from the, if we try to explain in detail just from the very beginning, first we select the uh, hijama site, we disinfect the uh, point where we are planning to make hijama, then uh, we apply uh, the wall, uh, the electro, uh, the, sorry, the mechanical pump to the cup wall and we uh, apply a vacuum over there. That vacuum provides a local anesthesia and uh, collect the subcutaneous material to the cup area. For example, some people might ask, uh, why don't you make local anesthesia uh, by using, for example, local anesthetics or other pomades? It is not necessary because the first cupping also provides a local anesthesia over there. Then, uh, in order to prevent the loss, loss of anesthesia effect, you should immediately remove the cup and apply the uh, superficial incisions to the uh, skin layer. And those in incisions should be limited to the epidermal layer uh, at about one millimeter depth. Then, and the cuts, I mean, the incisions should be parallel to the natural layers of the skin so that it will not leave a scar behind. And then as the last step, we apply the second suction. And at the end of the jama, we remove all cups and the blood in, inside and close the area with sterile dressings. And you can see from here, uh, normal uh, capillary area, this area is the area we work during hijama. You know, uh, there is a, is there any pointer I can bring? I think we don't have, anyway. Uh, you can see over there a capillary vessel uh, and there is a filtration and reabsorption balance between the capillary, uh, intercapillary pores and the uh, interstitial area. So what are we doing to that area? You know, you can see the patient just uh, up of the uh, upper part of the picture. We apply the cups uh, over there. With the cups, there is uh, with the, uh, okay. Can they see? Yes. Okay, you know, this is the cup we apply to the skin. By applying the cup and the vacuum to the skin, we form a skin uplifting over there and we call it skin dome. What happens inside the skin uplifting? Filtration uh, coming from skin capillaries uh, and collected fluids containing different causative pathological substances such as uh, heavy metals, and uh, fragmented erythrocytes and other uh, waste substances just collect under that skin dome. Can you see those particles over there? But this is the uh, skin barrier. Because of the skin barrier, the collected material cannot be, sorry, Yes, cannot be extracted from that area. This is the first part, the first step of the hijama technique. If you leave the cupping here, uh, you will see that 
the process is incomplete. You have to uh, open the skin barrier in order to uh, remove the toxic substances from the area. So what we do, as you see, uh, just at the upper side of the picture, we apply over here skin scarifications, very superficial, multiple skin scarifications to the area. And with that, we open the skin barrier. So what happens then, uh, we call it in Arabic, sharta mihjem, which are small, short, superficial skin incisions at about one or two millimeters length and uh, at about uh, 0.5, 0 0.1 is very, very, 0 0.2. 0 0.2 probably, up to 0 0.5 is, I think, not, no problem. Uh, with that uh, scarifications, we open the skin barrier for the extraction of collected fluids inside the skin dam, which we have uh, formed in the first step. And uh, after then, after making the skin scarifications, we apply the cups uh, for the second time. And this is the last step of triple S technique. And during that S technique, what happens uh, with the uh, pressure we apply over there, uh, all toxic materials collect into the cup. And we wait at about three or five minutes in that period so as to see the collections of the uh, waste materials into the cup. And at last we are hoping to see this view. So this is, you, you see the uh, skin barrier, interstitial area and capillary vessel. And you, we can see no uh, toxic substances here, such as uh, heavy metals, fragmented erythrocytes and other toxic wastes. No or little CPS. CPS is a, a terminological uh, explanation which has been established by some Egyptian scholars, which have also established the Taiba theory, uh, which means the, uh, sorry. I'm very sorry. Uh, which causes uh, disease or caused by the diseases. So we are hoping to see this view by the application of hijama. So as you can uh, understand from this process, hijama is a very effective detoxification application. And the main mechanism of hijama, uh, other than the other techniques, I mean the dry cupping or the uh, two-step uh, traditional Chinese medicine uh, technique of uh, wet cupping, this technique provides the maximum uh, detoxifying effect or to the body. I want to talk about al-istifra. Uh, istifra is an Arabic word, which means to spend, to consume, to waste, or to vomit. For example, in Turkey, Turkish language, we use istifra in the meaning of vomiting. But in traditional Yunani medicine, uh, Yunani medicine is one of the main three, three uh, uh, traditional medic medicine systems. Uh, for example, uh, one of them is traditional Chinese medicine. The second is traditional uh, Indian medicine, which is known as Ayurveda. And the uh, traditional system of medicine of our geography, including Anatolia and Europe, is called as Yunani medicine in the literature. Actually, personally, I call it traditional Anatolian medicine. Al Istifra is the traditional detoxifying uh, or detox application in Yunani medicine. Uh, you know, uh, maybe you have heard about this Yunani medicine works through four elements and four humors, and it is called as humoral theory. Humoral theory has been established by Hippocrates during his time, uh, and the, the principles of Yunani medicine are based on 
this theory, uh, Hippocrates humoral theory. According to this theory, there are four different humors in the body and the state of health and illness depends of the uh, balance of these humors. If these humors are in balance, you are healthy. If an imbalance occurs in the body, the, 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 the diseases comes after the imbalance. These humors are blood, bile, phlegm, and black bile. Black bile is also called as melancholy or sevda in Arabic. And every person is born with a temperament in which one of these humors is dominant. Uh, this is a book which has been uh, uh, written by a 15th century physician, an Ottoman physician. His name was Tabib Ibn Sherif. I first uh, met this Istifra uh, in his book. Uh, this book uh, is one of the first Turkish written, uh, I mean, which was written in Turkish language. The, uh, scientific language of those times was Arabic, but, but this book was written in Turkish. And in this book, uh, Ibn Sharif, the author of the book, says that when the body accumulates in excess uh, and the signs ap appear, it is necessary to clean the body from these excesses. I mean, toxic sub substances or excess humors. And he names this application as istifra and says that istifra is gathered under three main headings, including using laxative, you, uh, vomiting, and bloodletting. As you can guess, bloodletting consists of fast and hijama. And he says hijama is... Uh, assumed to be istifra'i kulli, because the blood, according to humoral theory, the blood humor is the mixture of all four humors. And by blood like it, letting or hijama, some amount from all four humors is removed. Therefore, blood letting is called as istifra'i kulli, and no other detox method can be as efficient as blood letting. This is just as the explanation of uh, Tabib Ibn Sherif from his book called Yadigar. So he says that bloodletting is superior to any other evacuation or detoxification method because you can remove any toxic substances or any uh, excessive humors from the body by uh, hijama or wet cupping therapy. For example, in the current literature, uh, Taiba theory has been established by uh, Professor El Said and his friends, uh, some Egyptian uh, colleagues, scholars. Uh, in that theory, uh, VCT, I mean the wet cupping therapy, hijama acts as an artificial kidney and uh, it seems to be related in principle to the scientific principles uh, like extract, extractory functions of the kidney. So hijama might be regarded as an artificial kidney that performs skin capillary filtration and size-dependent extraction of particles at pressures higher than filtration pressures in renal glomerulus. So they mean you can... Uh, promote a better uh, evacuation or a, a removal of toxic substances uh, than kidney. For example, extraction through kidney is limited to hydrophilic materials, but uh, hijama can extract hydrophilic and hydrophobic materials, both of them from the skin. And uh, in this table, you can uh, see the compression between dry cupping and wet cupping. I just want to, for example, uh, summarize it. For, uh, in the dry cupping, no blood clearance, but in the wet cupping El Hijama, there is a blood clearance and therapeutic indications of uh, Hijama is much uh, more compared to dry cupping. 
uh, also terophytic benefits uh, are more in a hijama. Uh, but if you, for example, proceed to traditional Chinese medicine style of wet cupping, in that style, uh, double S technique, they don't apply the first suction, but the first suction also is essential to collect the waste materials just under the skin uh, before uh, making skin scarifications. For example, in uh, the traditional Chinese medicine, it also provides some uh, extractive, extractive functions, but it is less when compared to uh, hijama. Uh, I don't want to tell all the uh, compressions over here. You can see from the table. But as you see, hijama is much superior to the other two techniques because it combines the uh, both of them. I mean, dry cupping and traditional Chinese medicine cupping techniques because it is it uh, combines all three steps: suction, scarification, and suction suction steps. So, as the last slide. Uh, what we have to do in our technique uh, of hijama technique, what we have to do after hijama. Uh, for example, uh, people are, uh, we can advise people to drink warm honey shroop after hijama. We don't advise to, to the patients eat immediately. Uh, we do hijama when the patient is hungry. Uh, of course, he wants to eat, but we advise him to eat some uh, very uh, simple food, light food, such as uh, fruit juice or a sherbet or a soup. Uh, also, the uh, patient can have a both, but after a few hours, 10 or 12 hours. And uh, we also uh, uh, advise the patient, recommend the patient to avoid movements and effort that will force the body for three days. So cupping therapy has survived for more than 5,000 years, and it is one of the most widespread traditional application. Therefore, there is a strong argument that there must be a basis for its effectiveness. Current medicine also supports this idea. Thank you very much for your patience. <laughs>